take out a huge variable, as Bill said, something that you use, a piece of equipment you use for every single shot in a round. Uh, take Never that variable out. You, you, you can't have a variable like that and expect to play very, very well. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in to the Match Play Podcast. My name is Bill Boos, longtime club fitter in San Diego, here with my buddy Jeff. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm a chiropractor and a high-level amateur with aspirations of turning professional. And we're here to talk about golf balls today, what it means to your game, why you should play the certain ones, and how to find your forever ball, and a little touch in on possibly the golf ball rollback coming up. Yo, Jeff, I kind of want to talk about golf balls here today. Um, Sounds good. Let's get your opinion as a better player, what you look for in your golf ball, what you like to feel, you know, stuff like that. So I know growing up in golf, I was um, obviously gaining swing speed over time, and as well as in my process of growing up in golf, there's been a change in the methodology of golf where uh, it's more of bomb and gouge than it used to be where it was more of precision golf. And so there was a shift of wanting maybe more spin when I was younger because I wanted to hit something saucy around a green all the time and have all that control, as well as the fact that higher spinning golf balls are a little easier to control off the tee. It might not go as far, but it's a lot easier to control that extra spin rate uh, and make the ball go straighter and find more fairways. But as time went on and golf kind of changed, that bomb and gouge shift definitely changed how I thought about my golf ball because distance became more of a need and uh, something that just you had to have to compete but you still needed to balance out that green side spin and control. And obviously, as you know, the lower the spin that golf ball is, the higher possible potential for an off-center hit or a slight uh, miscalculation in your ball contact caused that ball to really go sideways. So there's absolutely a huge balance that's necessary there. And so obviously growing up in the game and getting to work with club fitters such as you, I learned more about some of those ball physics uh, at a numbers point. And I knew what I needed to search for when I was doing ball fittings, which also didn't exist when I was younger. So that was a huge shift in the the game of golf for any level of golfer, whether you're a professional or just someone trying to have more fun on the golf course and find more fairways. Yeah, and finding the right golf ball, it's a little bit of a blend of am I getting the performance I'm seeing? Uh, does it feel good? Do I like it off the face? Is it hard? Is it soft? Whatever, in terms of the actual feel into the hand. But we demand performance out of our golf balls. The only, you know, club or whatever we hit every single time. You know, so some thought needs to be put into that in terms of Absolutely. finding one that feels good, performs good, and is really meeting your expectations around the greens. Uh, you might agree or disagree with this, Jeff, but. For the past 10 years or so, there's been a bigger shift in like CG locations and clubs and the golf ball came to follow. So we hit these real high kind of knuckleball-y kind of drives out there. Um, we started getting, you know, low eight, you know, 1800s, 1900 RPMs of spin if somebody can get it in the air. But, you know, depending on the player, they might like that. They might have wonderful control of their club head. Uh, and spin, like just to just point, is your friend. You know, if you want to sacrifice a little bit, and if you're a big distance guy or whatever, uh, sacrifice a little bit of that top end distance to get up to like 22, 23, 24, maybe 26, depending on your strike in the spin, to kind of gather more control over the intent, over the outcome of that golf ball. Would you agree with that, Jeff? Absolutely. I mean, there, yeah. there, it's definitely a pro and con when looking at how do you attack golf courses? What swing speed do you currently have and can you potentially have? And then what spin rate will match that? There's a lot of swing stats. I mean, launch angle, spin rate, a lot of that uh, really determines what ball and what spin you need for your, for your type of golf. And I think Ping has a great chart for this that uh, they use in their fittings for finding balls that are right for you, as well as based off of launch, your swing speed, ball speed, all those conversions. And that's something I've definitely used or at least had in the back of my mind when picking golf balls and looking at my uh, swing metrics. Yeah. And what golf ball are you playing right now just for the viewers? Uh, currently I'm playing a Titleist Pro V1, but I think I'm playing the 2018 version or 2020 version. 
It's three models old. I do know that I have a bunch of them left over. And that kind of plays into another thing I kind of want to talk about, which is when you're playing tournament golf, you have to play the same ball. You can't switch model years mid round or mid tournament. It's not legal. And so when I buy golf balls and I find one I like, I try to buy a bunch of it and I try to only play it because it lets me understand where my golf game is with as few changes in my game, as well as it's what I have to do to stay legal. And once that ball is no longer being made and I run out, I have to find a new golf ball. So I'm still constantly in practice trying to play with a sleeve of new balls to find the one that is going to be my next big purchase to keep moving forward. But yeah, currently I'm okay. playing with that old uh, Pro V1. So as everybody knows, Pro V1 Heritage Golf Ball has been around forever, seen all over the tour. What are you looking for from maybe your next ball? Like what are you looking to gain from a for that Pro V1 you've been playing for a while to maybe experimenting with a new ball? Because it's been a few years. There's been a few iterations of golf balls, Pro V1, Pro V1X, you know, TP5, TP5X. Have you what do you look for in your change? So I know in my next change i want something that has a little bit more spin around the greens and obviously allows me to uh still have distance off the tee but not um gain a crazy amount of spin because i mm -hmm. with the pro v currently i have the stopping power on the green but i don't have necessarily that pullback power uh which is something i i want to add to my game because it allows me to attack pins differently on greens whether it's a front pin with something short uh, that's a hazard, I can th feel comfortable throwing something past and pulling it back. It's something I haven't been able to do for a while. Honestly, the last ball I could do it was with was the Penta TP5, which was back when Great I was ball. in high school. <laughs> Great ball. Um, and obviously, changes are coming with the golf ball, and that kind of golf ball might come back with the golf rollback, which we'll get to later uh, in this mm. conversation. But um, a ball that has kind of piqued my interest that I want to try is that new Callaway Chrome Tour X. Um, mm -hmm. The thing I'm a little afraid of with it is the change in distance that I've seen in its testing. Uh, off of irons, it's quite hot. People are actually finding that they get a little more distance because it's lower spinning. Somehow in its launch, it goes higher with a little less spin. Descending goes a little better. So you still get that pullback on the green. You get a little extra distance with your clubs. And driver is actually, all speeds are going up by almost like three to five miles an hour with no change in swing speed, which is incredible. Yeah. But it would but be you something may, you, you adapt to. Yeah, you may remember, though, this was the same kind of story that uh, TaylorMade was coming up with when the original TP5 and TP5 next came out. Right. Same kind of iteration, you know, lower spins, hotter, higher, you know, all this stuff. And I know you've played TP5 in the past, like, but now you're into a Pro V1. Like, what, what made you switch back? So when I was younger, I obviously <laughs> had that want to be in Pro Vs, and the performance was there. And when the Penta came out, I tried it as I was trying to find the next ball for myself. And I bought a bunch of Pentas because it was the better performing golf ball for me. But when they shifted to the TP5 and TP5X name, there was a shift in popularity in TaylorMade. And... <laughs> a bit of their quality production came down and that was kind of when my golf spy started cutting up golf balls and I remember that really There's opened interesting the, stuff company yeah came out really opened every the the industry's eyes to quality control and if Absolutely. you don't know anything about this there was a huge issue with the center of golf balls being not centered and mm -hmm. if you don't understand what that means it means that if you have a golf ball with a not centered core there might be off to one side and you would be hitting cuts and cuts and cuts all day long because that's what that ball is going to do. Wherever that yeah, core is. lopsided. Right, wherever that ball you know, is it, lopsided, exactly, will yeah. go. And when the ball is lopsided like that, to Jeff's point, you're hitting cut, 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 cut. But you can also be, depending on the length of your putt, be missing outside, you know, cup or two. Right. So it was huge. And that, that was what shifted me back toward Titleist again. And I think that was actually a huge shift throughout the golf industry at that moment towards a ball that is literally x-rayed throughout its entire process. They were the first company that would x-ray every single golf ball for quality control to make sure that core was in the center so that the ball that was going to the tour pro and to the average Joe was exactly the same. 
which is huge. It, you know, we kind of all want to be playing that same equipment that we see on tour. And it's reliable. It's one of the kind of, the, yeah, absolutely. That's why the best players in the world use it. Yeah. And Pro V1, Pro V1X, obviously used by the majority of tour pros out there. There are some fringe cases for the, you know, TP5X, the Chrome Soft, the Callaway and TaylorMade guys. Uh, the Scrix on ball that's probably number four in tour. Don't quote me there. That's not an actual quote. I played that for a, a bit. Great ball. It is great a really ball. good ball. I played it myself. You know, it's it feels good. It's explosive off the face. It responds well around the greens. So when we're circling this back and kind of, if you're still listening and kind of curious as far as which golf ball you should be playing, yeah, comment below. We'd All love these, to know. <laughs> please, that'd be fantastic. Um, but when you're going out and testing them, you know you're not going to see a 30 yard difference between a Pro V1 and a, and a Z Star, for example, or a TP5. You know, small variances. But when we're talking about premium golf balls, we expect to get a premium uh, response out of our golf ball in terms of feel, ball speed, spin rates around the greens, everything like that. It's premium. That's why we put that tag on it. Yeah. Um, but if you're looking for a new golf ball for you, the the only way that you can really get out there and, yeah, you can go to ball testing is as infrequent as they are. But it doesn't cost a lot if you're really on the search for that perfect kind of setup is to just grab yourself a sleeve of balls, go over to the chipping green, play around with it, and just experiment and see what th this ball is really going to do for you long term in order to make a switch. Um they all feel slightly different, have their benefits, have their you know disadvantages, but it, a lot of it just comes down to you know what feels good off the club face. What inspires confidence in the logoing? I mean, st little little stuff like that can go a long, long way. Yeah, and on top of that, just uh, for the viewers, golf is already hard. Mm. Why add extra variables like playing a different ball every single round? That ball is going to react different. If you're not used to it, you don't know what to expect off the face. That ball might feel fantastic off your driver and absolutely terrible off your irons. And who knows what it's going to do around the greens on your wedges and putting. I mean, there's that's probably the, the easiest way to tell the difference in sound, softness or hardness of a golf ball. And also now your speed control is going to be different because of that sound feel and the compression of the ball. So picking one golf ball and sticking with it or trying a bunch to find the one that you like the most and performs the best for you and then buying a bunch of it so that you can take out a huge variable, as Bill said, something that you use, a piece of equipment you use for every single shot in a round. Uh, take Never that variable out. You, you, you can't have a variable like that and expect to play very, very well. Yeah, fully agree. Fully agree. We'll get off the topic of finding a golf ball now, and we'll kind of use the remainder of our time here with you to talk about upcoming changes with a golf ball rollback. It's a hot topic in golf right now. There's not a ton of data about it open to the public as of yet, but I'm sure these manufacturers are grinding hard, long, you know, putting in big research hours to m give them an, and their players on tour an advantage after that ball rollback what would incur. And if you don't know precisely what is available to us is they're trying to slow down the ball by creating, you know, a little more spin rate, you know, things like that. Um, Jeff, do you have any comments on that? Yeah. I've been thinking about the topic a lot lately um, as I'm getting ready for tournament season and obviously preparing for whatever change they're going to throw into competitive golf with this golf rollback. Yeah, and announced right now, uh, 2028 is I believe the implementation of that. Is that correct? Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to go with what you said because you you know you're in the industry more than I am, so you probably have that information more readily available. Yeah, that's the that's the year I recall seeing. Um, whether or not that happens, it push back, push forward. We'll find out here soon enough. Like we said, there's not a ton of information out there. Yeah, going on what I'm kind of prepping for is obviously it's still unknown, and I've mostly been just trying to figure out how I feel about the golf rollback. Whatever happens, I'm going to deal with it. Uh, and How do you feel about it? I've been back and forth. I mean, equipment is come so far from years years ago that no matter what golf ball they're going to create, equipment's probably going to end up at some point nulling and voiding the amount of spin they take off to keep these guys hitting it as far as they are. I mean, from my understanding and what I've read, it's only going to affect some of the guys by about five to maybe maximum of 15 yards, 
which is yeah, a club, and, club and a half. But, but and to that point, before we move on here, Jeff, uh, that they're saying that that variable is for the highest speed players, your tour players, you know, about ten to twelve yards is you know fifteen at the top end. But us amateurs, we're probably only going to lose you know eight yards when you're. 100, 105, probably more like three or four yards when we're down in that 85 region. So it's really, it'll be noticeable for sure, but it's not going to be deal breaking. Right. It, it's like we, like I said, and like you said, it's it's really only about changing the, the game and making it longer by about half a club to a club and a half at most. Yeah. Not crazy. Still enjoyable. Yeah. And it goes back to, you know, what we've been trying to say for, for years now, which is, you know, if we're struggling, we're a high handicapper and stuff like that. Let's tee it forward. Let's have more fun. Yeah. And and, yeah. and moving forward on, on thoughts of it, it's it's really not going to affect the pure strikers of the golf ball. Oh, gosh, no. Because they're going to have the face control. They're going to have the contact that basically makes the spin not hurt them as much. Yeah, um, and plus they know how to control their spins, increase spins, reduce spins, all exactly. kinds of stuff. But because we're going to see increased spin, we're going to see increased side spin. So for those that are hitting it more sideways, well, it's going to go more sideways than it does yeah, now. And and either the players will accommodate for that or these manufacturers through consecutive years of testing with you know PGA Tour stats will combat that a little bit. But this, the first iteration of these is going to be pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, we, us in the golf shop, we're kind of speculating, like, is it going to perform like an old – you know, tour professional hundred or balada or something like that. Are we going to be able to start you ripping, know, clubs ripping back. it back 30, 40 yards? Like, yeah, I mean, that was, it's, it's going to be interesting. That was fun times in golf. That was, that was actually, I think something that before distance became so big in golf was the thing that people tuned in to watch the PGA tour to see is these guys are ripping up a, a ball an entire greens length, um, yeah, throwing it to the bags and yeah. zipping it all the way forward. Yeah. Or just hitting like, crazy short sided shots. shots that could pull back from like five, to 10 feet away, they could just get so much spin on it that they weren't afraid of being as short-sighted as they are mm -hmm. now. I mean, like we've talked about in previous videos, we want to eliminate being short-sighted, and tour pros do that better than anyone, but they still happens from time to time. But with the tour ballada, it was a fun thing to watch because they could do some incredible feats with those balls and the spin rates yeah. and all that. So that's another thing that is honestly a curiosity in mind with this ball rollback is, is that going to happen? Because um, that'd be a cool we'll aspect. We'll have to, to wait add. and see. Yeah, we don't know. But every everything that's been slowly leaked to us so far, it's it seems up like to that it's direction. Make, yeah. make golf fun again. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> short game is going to become an a, again almost like a magic thing that you have to learn and perform the art of. Uh, and the people that are really good at it are going to excel, and the people that are ball strikers are probably going to excel. And that gap might change slightly. So Scotty Scheffler, best mm -hmm. ball contact guys in the world are going to gain an advantage there um, mm -hmm. against some of the guys that maybe aren't playing or aren't the best ball strikers, um, but make up for it in other parts of the game. So I'm, I'm curious to see how it affects the rankings worldwide. I don't imagine it's going to be crazy, but who knows? And um, I think it's going to make golf really fun to watch around the greens again, rather than particularly bombs off the tee. But with the incredible R and D that goes on in the golf equipment world, I have a feeling that the driver is probably not going to be affected as much as um, they're hoping it will be. And we're just going to get more control around the greens, potentially. We'll see. I mean, like we said, there's not a ton of hard evidence as to what these guys are doing and how they're going to become patent and accommodating the USGA and RNA on this one. But over the next couple of years, there'll be more to come and we'll sure to kind of keep, keep you in tune on it. Yeah. Uh, Bill, this was a really fun conversation. Um, and I think we're probably wrapping this one up yeah, for this sure. week. Yeah. So, guys, if you enjoyed this conversation between Bill and I, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Uh, like we said earlier, comment the ball you play below. We'd love to hear about it. And if you have questions about balls, please message below, and we'll get back to you on uh, our take. But thanks for tuning in this week, and we uh, hope to see you guys again. Thanks. Take it easy, guys.